up everybody? So we're out in the shop with another daily vlog and in this episode we are going to be working on the handle for the EDC sax knife that we've been working on. Now I know that a lot of y'all don't think of this as a scrap knife because that does not look like a scrap knife but it was made out of a scrap piece of steel that again a lot of people would have just thrown away. So sticking with that theme the whole scrap into, you know, actual cool things, I'm going to be using a scrap piece of wood to make the handle. So you might be looking at this going, Eric, that is just a beat up piece of wood. Why, why, why would you use that for the handle? That's going to look absolutely crazy. There's no cool grain in that, anything. It's just a rough sawn piece of, piece of wood. Why would you use that? So I've been wanting to use this particular wood for a handle for two different reasons. One, it is insanely hard piece of wood. My 14 tooth per inch bandsaw that's on my <laughs> porta bandsaw is going to hate its life cutting through this piece of wood. It is one of the hardest piece of woods that, well, it is technically the hardest piece of wood I've ever cut through. Um, I've had to use the chop saw <laughs> to typically cut through this uh, because you know, a lot of the saws won't even phase this. That is from edge retention with a chopper, and that's all it did to this. <laughs> so it's absolutely insanely hard. Now, the cool part about this particular piece of wood is how the grain runs. So if you look at it, that is the center of this right here. So you can see all the rings all the way down this. I've wanted to use this to make a knife handle for a while, but I haven't had a handle that actually fit this. So now that I do, I'm going to make some handles out of this. Now, originally I was thinking, Eric, do you want to do liners on this? And then I just started, you know, looking at different knives online and saxes and all that. And a lot of them, the ones that had liners kind of looked cheesy. And the ones that didn't have liners and it was just steel and wood and just just super minimalist and awesome, those were awesome to me. So I decided we're not doing liners. It is literally going to be this beautiful wood grain pattern and that awesome knife and then some black pins. That's it. Nice, simple, awesome, rugged, super tough handle material. I think that's the way to go on this one. So that's what we're going to do. What we got to do first is we got to go ahead and get this cut down so that I can use it as scales. Again, my uh, port band saw is going to hate its life, but you know, it is what it is. Sometimes we got to do what we got to do. So we're going to go ahead, cut this down, and then start setting it up to be able to put on that knife to make its handles. Let's get it. So now that we have this cut down, I want to go ahead and mark the outline so that I can trim off some of the excess of them and make sure we have an idea of how that grain is going to end up working out. So it doesn't fit the handle exactly. I am going to have to trim just a hair off of the belly a little bit and back here just a little bit but the little bit that I'm going to take off here and here is going to keep that pinhole right there nice and even so it won't be a won't be a big deal and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to follow this wood grain pattern right here and just use it to help guide me on that front
So now that we're at the 2x72, all we're going to do is just grind back to this actual line. We're not going to grind anything past that because we still need to go through, square up the scales a little bit, drill our pinholes, and then we can remove all the material that's you know left after that if we wanted to. But we're probably going to go ahead and square the thinner one right there. It's slightly thinner. Square that one and then go in and square this one off of the height of that one. At least that's the plan, that's the goal. Let's go ahead, start grinding. So the easiest way to be able to take one scale and match your other scale to its height is to take yourself a marker, find something that is roughly going to make it to where your height is perfect right here, which is what this one does. It is perfect right there. And then flatten one side of the other set of scales. So this one's already flattened. That one's already good to go. Flatten that one up and then just take and use your marker all the way around it. This is like the easiest, least expensive way <laughs> to be able to do this so that you know what you need to grind back to to make this set of scales match this one. And it'll be nice and square. So we're going to go ahead grind off that excess right there and then we will have ourselves a matching set of book matched really cool grained scales
All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap this daily vlog up here. We got all the little <laughs> clamps on here. It's, it's funny how many clamps I end up putting on things just to make sure everything sticks to how I want it to stick. So we've got this on here. It's looking good. I really cannot wait to actually be able to shape these scales and then polish them because I want that crazy grain that's going on there to just stand out and pop. So ah, I hate drying times. It's like the the worst part about this is having to wait for glues and epoxies and stuff like that to, to dry so that you can actually do the next step. But it is what it is. It's part of knife making. Got to do it. So we're going to let that dry overnight and we'll start working on it in tomorrow's episode. Now, hopefully y'all like this. If y'all did, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or one of my other videos. Subscribe to the channel. Guys, y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. And I will see y'all tomorrow when we start shaping this handle.